Good dog, and welcome back to your PA Dutch Minute. Uh, another viewer requested video this week, and I'm glad that somebody uh, requested this. In fact, I'm kind of mad at myself for not, have think, have, not have, having thought of this topic before. Um, but a viewer call, uh, emailed in and said, could you please do a video on pronunciation of Pennsylvania Dutch? And it's, it's, a, it's a good question because if you didn't grow up with Pennsylvania Dutch speaking parents or grandparents or maybe someone that had a, a, a pronounced Pennsylvania Dutch accent, speaking Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch and getting it to sound Pennsylvania Dutch can be difficult for a lot of people. Um, you're making sounds that you aren't used to making, um, and that takes uh, training your mouth muscles uh, to do that. kind of sounds funny, but that is what you're doing. So, uh, I put together a quick list of some sounds that are used often in Pennsylvania Dutch and how they sound and an example of a word or two from the dialect that has that sound in it. Uh, and a lot of times it has to do with diphthongs, uh, when two vowels are together, what sound that makes, and a couple of consonants, consonants that are different in English. So let's jump right in. And I kind of have these in, let's say, alphabetical order. So a common uh, diphthong that you'll see in Pennsylvania Dutch is a double A. And I have the word sock uh, there to, to say or to tell. The sound, I have parentheses, is what you want to think of as an English speaker. You're making an A-W sound, like in the English word saw, sock. So when you see a double A, that's the sound you want to think of. Aw, aw. The next vowel combination is AU, and if you studied standard German, this will be familiar to you. So I have the word laut in Pennsylvania Dutch, which means loud, and you want to think OW as in the word cow in English, so laut, ow, ow. The next two are ones that often get mixed up uh, at first for English speakers learning Pennsylvania Dutch, and that's the vowel combination EI and then followed up by IE. So E before I in Pennsylvania Dutch, like we have the word SI, makes the sound I, E-Y-E, -E. think of the English word I. So it's always I, SI, I, SI. I kind of tell students of mine to think of it this way. If you're thinking of it purely from the English perspective, you always say the second vowel first. <laughs> E-I, I, sigh. Because look at the next one, I before E. That sound, like in the Pennsylvania Dutch word key, which means cows, makes an E-E -E sound in English like the word cheese. Key, E, I, E. E. So that might help you keep these uh, separate. They're difficult. I know when students will always have trouble with their EI and their IE, I tell them, like I said, if they're English speakers anyway, think of the second letter. EI, SI, IE, key. Maybe that'll help you. Those are tricky at first to keep separate and to keep correct. I think one of the toughest sounds uh, for English speakers to really master and to do correctly in Pennsylvania Dutch is when we're dealing with the consonants C and H. And there are two different situations. So let's look at this first one. If CH follows an I, an EI, or an IE, it is pronounced like the initial H sound in the English word huge. Becher, gleiche, rieche. You want to make that H sound first. Think of the word huge. Huge. H, Becher. Gleiche. Rieche. That is a difficult sound to master. You, what your mouth is doing, you, you're kind of closing your, your mouth to go to that CH sound, but you're still pushing air through. Becher. Gleiche. Rieche. It's, it's difficult to do. Um, but try it practice it. Now, there's another situation. If the CH follows an A, an O, or a U, it is pronounced by making a guttural sound like in the English or the Scottish word loch. That's more of that H, H, like in the Pennsylvania Dutch words dach, noch, suche. I'm hoping that you can hear the difference with this recording that I have between that first situation like bicha and dach. 
There's much more of a h in the second one when you're following an A, O, or a U as there is with following an I, an E, I, or an I, E. That'll take practice, but don't let that deter you. Another situation in Pennsylvania Dutch that is kind of odd at first for a lot of people learning the language is when we're uh, dealing with the letter G, but only if it falls between two vowels. And this is, this is kind of weird at first to get used to, but the letter G, if falling between two vowels, is pronounced like the letter Y in the English word yes. So I have three examples here. Dawa, Raya, Sawa. Even though there's a G there, it's falling between two vowels, so it makes a Y sound. So it's not dogga, rega, zaga, like you might think it would be, but it's da, rea, saw. Okay? And a couple more vowel combinations. So OI, you'll see often in Pennsylvania Dutch, like in the word boy, which is the word for pie in Pennsylvania Dutch, or one form of the word pie, makes an OY sound like in the English word toy, oi. Oi. S-C-H is always the letter combination for the sh sound, S-H in English. You will never see an S and an H next to each other in Pennsylvania Dutch without a C in the middle, unless it's some English word that's been pulled into whatever you're saying. I gave the Dutch word schul, which is the word for school, and just think S-H as in short, sh, sh. V's in Pennsylvania Dutch uh, are different than in English. They make more of an F sound. I gave the Pennsylvania Dutch word verrikt, which is crazy. Verrikt. Just think F like in English, like in the word fox. W's, and here's where people that studied standard German first, you know, W's, if you didn't know this, in German, W's make a V sound. So we see the word, and this is difficult for uh, German speakers first, or people that learn German first and then are learning Pennsylvania Dutch. They see the word Wasser, W-A-S-S-E-R, and in German you would say Wasser with a V sound. But in Pennsylvania Dutch, the V, or the W stays more of an English style W, Wasser, Wasser. So think like the word water, W, W. That's the sound you want to make with your W's in Pennsylvania Dutch. And then finally, the letter Z. And this is another one that takes a little practice. Uh, I gave the Pennsylvania Dutch word zucker, which is the word for sugar. Z's make a T-S sound and think like at the end of the word hats. You go to the T, T, and then go right to an S. Tz, tz, zucker, zucker. And that's another uh, consonant that takes practice because we don't really make that sound often well, ever with the letter Z in English, uh, but that's what you want to do in Pennsylvania Dutch. Tz, tz, tzucker, tzucker, okay? So there's just a down and dirty uh, video on pronunciation, and it is not easy. It takes practice, uh, but again, that's the only way you're going to get better. If you happen to have at your disposal someone that does speak Pennsylvania Dutch, uh, it'd be great to practice with them because they can help you with your pronunciation, but if all you have is, you know, are these videos, then that's okay too. Uh, just practice them, and the best way is really to find things out there that are in Pennsylvania Dutch and try and read them out loud, practicing your pronunciation. Okay, so uh, if you have an idea for a future video, my email is at the end of the of the video here. Just send me an email uh, with your idea, and I'll get working on it. Also, don't forget uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll get updates every time a new video is uploaded. And please tell your friends if you know someone out there that's really interested in learning Pennsylvania Dutch, or you think would find this stuff rather interesting. Please share the information. Uh, but until next time, uh, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch and mock scoot. Mm -hmm.